This is an introduction to plated through-hole soldering by rebuilding our Lab 1 flashlight circuit on this PCB, or printed circuit board. Here's some solder that we'll be using. This is leaded solder, so be careful to clean up when I'm done. And that's the soldering iron tip that I'll have, so you'll see that around. Notice how it's not completely clean, so I'm going to start by tinning the tip. A few other things that you need to have, some hand tools, a little bit of pliers are always good, and some tiny snips are, are uh, very useful as well. Uh, last but not least, you want your protective personal equipment like safety glasses, which I'll put on now. And uh, additionally, you want to have appropriate, appropriate ventilation and just gather all of your components that you'll need. I'm going to start with some resistors to start, but you should probably do uh, smaller components first and then work your way up to the taller components. The idea is we're going to keep working on the putting components in on one side of the board, and then flipping it over. So you want to start with the smallest components first, just sort of fit them in where they need to go. Right? You can bend the legs a little bit to make it go in. Squeeze the component in, right? make sure it's pretty flush with the board. And then flip the board to the other side, and what we're going to do is we want to make it mechanically stable, so we're just going to bend the leads a little bit, so that way even if we move the board a little bit, we don't have to worry about the component falling out of place or becoming not level with the surface of the board. There we go. So you can see it's pretty mechanically stable. Now I'm just about ready to solder, so I'm going to turn my iron on. Make sure I have my solder ready to go. Uh, this is a good iron, so it's already up to temperature. And you can see it's not completely clean, so I'm just going to go ahead, wipe it a little bit on the sponge off screen, and tin the tip. I always start by doing that. And it, you'll see that I do it a lot throughout the overall process. So it's a little bit excessive, but I wanted to show you that. Just wipe off the excess in your sponge. And voila! Notice how the tip is much shinier. So now we're going to follow our four-phase process. Right? First, we're going to apply heat. Then I'm going to flow the solder in like so. Then I notice how I leave the heat on for a little bit more before I remove the iron. So apply heat, flow solder, remove solder, remove heat. That's it. That's the four phase process that'll ensure a lot of really good robust joints. And you can check them by seeing how shiny they are. Um, so they should be about as shiny as the uh, rest of the tinned pads that you see on the circuit. Last but not least, you want to trim the excess lengths on the leads. Just be careful not to let them fly into your eye. You can hold it with your finger to keep it stable. And there we go. That's how we were going to assemble pretty much every component on here. Uh, I'm speeding up a lot more of the assembly, so the rest of this is just going to be a lot of uh, assembling components as you go, working from the shortest components to the board on up to the tallest components. Here's all the resistors in place. Next, we want to do our diodes. Be careful, there are two different types of diodes. You don't want to mix them up. You don't mix up your SD-103 with your 1M4148s. So I'm going to take my diodes, just like I did, and notice that there's a tiny bar on the silk screen, the label for the, uh, there's the bar right there, the label for the printed circuit board. So make sure that the bar on the diode, the little black bar, lines up with that bar. If you do that, you'll be all set. So go ahead, put it in, and then assembling your diodes is just the same as assembling every other component. All right, so put a few more components in. You might find it easy to load a bunch of components onto one side of the board. Retin the tip as you need to. So notice I've got you know three or four different components that I'm going to solder all at once. And then uh, a little bit of high speed here. I'm just going to go through and solder everything pretty quickly. Exact same four-phase process. Notice that I'm wiping the sponge off and retinning as necessary. Uh, one thing is when you're clipping a lot of these pieces, just make sure they're not going to fly off. I use my finger to make sure they don't they don't go all over the place. Also, be careful with your LEDs. Orientation matters. Make sure that flat side lines up with the bar on the uh, schematic. All right, so you can see I've placed my LEDs, and I want to make sure that they, uh, they're aligned properly. So I squeeze them in, and then bend them flat so that they run at a right angle before you solder them in place. Um, there's a switch. Just going to go ahead and put that in. Nothing fancy with that. It's just the next tallest component. Pin 1 aligns with pin 1 on the silk screen. So there's a little notch that shows where the pin 1 is on the left side of that. So I'm going to go ahead, flip the board over, and the next thing I got to do is make sure that we tack opposite corners of the integrated circuit in place. So first I do pin 1, and then I go ahead and do pin 8. 
and then you flip it over and make sure that the chip is properly aligned and flush with the board. It's very, very hard to fix the pin once you have everything in. Now that it's aligned, I can just quickly solder the rest of the pins and that's all good to go. Going ahead and solving the rest of the board, um, it's pretty straightforward. Just be careful with the potentiometer's orientation and ask an instructor if you're unsure. You want to make sure that when you rotate it right, it goes up. Last but not least, we've got our battery clips. Notice how there's a big one and a small one, a male and a female side. Uh, it's labeled on the silk screen, big clip, small clip. Should be fairly obvious, but again, ask if you're unsure. And you've got to be careful soldering these because they'll wiggle a lot when they're in the board. So make sure that you mechanically brace it when you flip it over to solder that they're perfectly aligned. If they're not aligned, it's going to be kind of hard to get your battery in there. Another really good, important gotcha with these uh, clips is that they are flexible. You're going to be tempted to touch them with your hands, but if you do, they will hurt. It's metal. It'll be very, very hot. So here we go. Now we've got our assembled board. You think we're ready to test it? Uh, before putting the battery in, go ahead and use a multimeter and measure if there's any shorts between power and ground. You want the switch to be in the on position for this, so I'm just testing it right at the battery clip. And you can see right over there it's saying OL overload, so their rails aren't shorted. Another good test to do is beep mode, and what that'll do is it'll beep if things are conductive. So you can make sure that your solder worked and, you know, different parts in the circuit that are supposed to be connected are connected. Note to self, always double check that the switch is in the on position, otherwise you won't be able to see if things are connected or not. Last but not least, we got our power on test. So we can just verify that the flashlight works as intended and we can dim it and brighten it. All right, are we done yet? No, we gotta make sure, first and first foremost, that we clean up after our leaded waste. Sure, our circuit's ready to go, but we don't wanna leave leaded waste in the environment. So grab a leaded waste disposal container and make sure you collect anything that could have been exposed to lead and toss it in there. Um, still not done. Uh, remember, we got to clean that flux off. So this is some flux remover, uh, just branded very clean. So it's just really simple. Remove your battery first, spray the board both sides, and wipe it down with a paper towel. Still not quite done. Got to make sure that when you're done, you wash your hands with soap and water. Also be sure to make sure the soldering iron is off and unplugged. Thank you for your time, and let us know if you have any questions.